Welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. Hey there guys! In today's video, I am going to show you how to use all these different things in order to fix the holes in a sock. So I'm going to do a darning tutorial today to fix problems like this and the problem of a worn out heel. When your heel on your sock gets super worn out to the point where you get this cute little hole forming and all of the weakness around, I'm gonna show you how to correct for that so that you don't need to throw out your socks. I mean, in the case of this sock, I wouldn't usually have darned it because it was just, you know, one of those basic socks, but when you have those fancy schmancy roots socks, those nice winter cozy socks, it's such a bummer to only get a couple of seasons out of them because they're pretty expensive too. Or if you have hand knit socks, you never really want to get rid of those. So for this project, you are going to need some socks that you want to fix. You're also going to need some embroidery floss. I'm using some contrasting colors, but you could definitely try and match your sock in order to fix it. You're going to need a darning needle or an embroidery needle. You might need a thimble if you're um, somebody who tends to stab yourself a lot. You're also going to need something hard and round. So you could use something like a jar or an empty candle. You could also use a tennis ball. I'm going to use a tennis ball just because it's a little bit easier to hold in my hand. I think that's everything. Um, everything that I am going to use I will link below in the description. So you can just check it out there and yeah, I use affiliate links. So definitely if you're going to buy it anyway, buy it with my affiliate link and that way I can keep paying for my avocados. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. First thing you're going to need is your ball and your damaged sock. So I'm going to grab the sock that has a hole in the heel, you can see that. And then what you want to do is turn your sock inside out. This way the mending that you're doing is actually being done on the wrong side of the fabric uh, as opposed to where everyone's going to see. And then you spread that sock heel over top of your tennis ball and pull it fairly tight. What that's going to do is keep the hole open because that hole, we don't want to close up that hole, we want to weave new bits to make that hole close up. So I'm going to use this sort of lavender periwinkle color um, as my embroidery floss for this guy uh, just so that you can see what I'm doing. All right so I'm taking my embroidery floss which I have thinned out into its one uh, one strand of embroidery floss and then I'm going to double it up by putting it through the eye of my needle and pulling it let's see so that there's two pieces of thread on the needle. Next thing you're going to do is find the direction of the stitches in your sock. So you can see on mine, we've got stitches going this way. The lines are this, north to south and east to west. There isn't really a line you can follow on the diagonal. So what that means is we're going to start a little bit off to the edge of our hole. Basically we're going to make a woven box just around that hole. So we're going to start by pulling up a loop. And this is a cheater's way to making sure you get it right. Only pull through the loop. I guess it's not a cheater's way, it's just kind of a hack. Knitting is done with two layers, and even though these were knit on a machine, there's two layers, two loops, one on this wrong side and one on the right side. So as long as you're only grabbing the loops that are on the wrong side, your mending is not going to show through the front of that sock. You just weave only on that wrong side. Then you do the same thing coming back down, keeping your stitches as close together as you can, trying to pull up pretty much every loop that's available to you, all the way back down. And then you come back up the other way. Pretty much we're just doing the same stitch all the way across our square up and down. And then we're gonna switch directions in order to create the weave. When you get to the hole, as you can see here, there's nothing for me to grab on here. What you do is you just skip the hole and grab the first loop that's available to you after the hole. If there's weak spots, same thing. You don't have to grab a loop from the weak areas. Just skip it, but grab as many loops on either side of the weak area as you can. And that is going to just help you close up your hole. You can already see what this 
darning is doing, reinforcing the stitches around the hole while covering up the hole with that blue thread. And if you used white thread, honestly, you really would not be able to see this. I'm using the blue thread so that it's easy to see. But definitely you could use contrasting thread to make it interesting. You could also use matching thread to have it hidden if it's an important pair of socks that your grandmother knitted you or something, then you could definitely try and keep it looking how it originally did. But it's kind of cool if you pick contrasting colors and mend your clothing, your socks for example, with only contrasting colors because then it's almost like they take on a life of their own and it's like you've got some neat artwork that you get to wear and that is going to last even longer than the original garment did. So you can see now those threads are reinforcing that hole and now what we're gonna do is start going the other way. So I'm just going to do a 90 degree turn with my little tennis ball and I'm gonna just loop through the other direction. This one's a little bit more difficult because the loops are, um, they were vertical, so horizontal, you're kind of just making it up as you go. I'm gonna weave through all of these guys. I'm just gonna zoom through until I'm at the hole. Okay, so now I am back at that hole. What I'm gonna do here is use those blue bits of thread from what we did before and just weave around them as we go over the hole and then I'll pull through. And then same thing the other way, use the loops until you can't and then weave through those little lines that we originally made. And you can do some pretty cool things with these patches. If you switch your uh, thread color halfway through, you could make sort of like a basket weave or a plaid even by doing this sort of weaving over a hole. So there's a lot you could be doing with this as opposed to just throwing out your stuff when it gets a little hole in it. All right, so now I'm just coming up to the end. I'm just trying to weave in the end um, of my embroidery floss so that I don't have to tie a knot. And basically to do that, you just keep going around where you are no longer needing to weave and that's just gonna keep that embroidery floss tucked away in a nice tight way. You could also bring it back to right where you started, like this, and then you could tie one knot, just one double knot is gonna secure your front to your back, your beginning to your end. Pull that tennis ball out and you can see now how the mending looks from the wrong side, but watch this. Look at how good it looks from the outside. You can barely even see where we fixed that hole. You can see that even though we stitched a whole bunch all the way around this hole, you can see that it's very subtle. And if it had been done in white thread, you would really have struggled to be able to see it. But that weave is visible now from the right side. And now that whole sock has just been saved from a landfill. So of course you could have just thrown out this sock because the heels got worn out. You could throw out anything when it gets worn out. But instead, what I want to kind of perpetuate with this channel is the idea that you can fix something and the idea that if you love your things, if you love your clothing, it's gonna last. So I just, I'm just gonna do that one more time. I have another sock here. Where is that hole? Right here. I have another sock with a hole, so I'm just going to do one more um, mending. This one I'm going to just sort of speed through. I'm not going to talk through it, so if you need any of the instruction, go back to that previous sock, but I'm just going to do it again on another sock so that you can see kind of one more time what we're doing. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I do put out a video almost every Tuesday and Thursday. Sometimes I miss Tuesdays if it was a crazy weekend, but most Thursdays and almost every Tuesday. And um, yeah, definitely subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments because I'm always looking for new things to be doing. And if you have a suggestion, I would love to hear it. Also, I just want to shout out to Debbie. Thank you for watching all of my videos. I love reading your comments and it definitely warms up my day to be able to see that you actually like watching these videos. It makes me feel pretty good as a creator. And there you have it. Another fixed hole. Pull that out. And you can see this one, it was a little thinner, so I ended up with some visible stitching, but not a ton. Again, if you did it in orange, you really wouldn't be able to tell. 
and that sock has now been fixed, so it's one less thing going into the landfill again. So, I mean, it doesn't seem like much when you do it at one time, but if you think about it, these two pairs of socks, like just in volume, that's a lot of garbage to be throwing out. Now they don't need to be thrown out because we have corrected the problem. Which one was it? This one. Look at that, you can barely even see it. Awesome. So that's it, that's pretty much the whole thing. If you like this video, like I said, leave me a comment and uh, like it. Definitely subscribe because, like I said, I put out new videos all the time. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!